What's going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 31 now of the Bristol Rovers career mode series. And first of all, I'm going to be showing you how to change a player's work rates. It's pretty simple really um, when you know how to do it. All you have to do is go into formations on the squad tab and then what you have to do is press X to edit the formation. And then click on the player you want to change the work rate of. Click on player work rate and then change it to the one that you want. Of course, it's set on default at the moment. I'm not going to be changing any of them because there's a slight bug, which means that it won't work properly uh, because I did try doing it uh, so that I can have my centre-backs with perfect work rates, but for some reason it didn't work. And there's also other features that you can play around with there as well, such as player positioning and stuff like that, but I'm not really sure what that does, to be honest, but it probably doesn't work as... Um, as uh, the uh, player work rates doesn't seem to be working either for some strange reason. But anyway, we're going into this game against Brentford here in the Football League 1. And uh, Brentford, I'm pretty sure they are a team that are currently doing okay. I think they're about mid-table and, uh, you know, this is a game that we're going to want to be winning because... We are currently in really good form and uh, we're obviously battling with Barnsley to get that uh, first place position at the top of the table. So hopefully we can get that this episode. If not, then maybe next episode. But, you know, with the form that we're on at the moment, I can see us probably getting to the top of the table. But uh, it's going to get a lot tougher in the f next few matches. We've got quite a few tough fixtures that's for sure and uh, I didn't actually realize but in the last episode or the episode before when we played Charlton Athletic I said that they were in the championship and um, I was wrong they actually got relegated from the championship and now they're in the Football League One so uh, yeah apologies for that but they are in the Football League One looking to get promoted back into the championship and uh, they are one of our rivals as well but uh, I think we're going to be playing them in this episode if not next episode one of the episodes anyway, maybe episode 32, I'm not 100% sure, I can't actually remember because I recorded this a little while back. I do uh, huge recording sessions where I just basically go on a recording frenzy and just record as many games as possible because that's really the important thing about this career mode is just to get into the swing of things and uh, you know, when you're winning a match you might as well just carry on and uh, Gerard Hughes there playing in this match against Brentford and uh, Something interesting to note is that Gerard Hughes, as we go into half-time against Brentford here, 0-0, pretty boring game if I'm going to be honest with you, but something to note is that Gerard Hughes now has the potential to be special. I don't know if I've got the squad report in this episode, it may be in the next episode, but in the next squad report you're going to see something very interesting from Gerard Hughes. His growth is incredible, it's absolutely immense. If he carries on growing like this, He's going to turn out into an absolute monster. He's already got really good uh, physical stats and uh, technical stats. And uh, I can really see them growing to be a really, really good all-round player, if I'm going to be honest with you. He's currently 59 overall, and um, you're going to see in the next few episodes uh, his progression and what overall he does become at the end of this month. And I do bring on Ryan Gould, though, for Hughes. Because uh, Hughes really wasn't playing that well in uh, the first half. And although uh, people may be hounding me saying, well, I know you like to kind of have a look at the player who's doing the worst overall. But you never know. In the second half, they could do a little bit better. And Brentford really should have scored there. But I usually like to take off the player that's doing the worst on the pitch. Unless it's a defender. Because I don't feel the need to take them off. Because... I do feel that they have the chance to redeem themselves, if uh, you see what I mean there. But uh, anyway, we're going into this game and um, not really much happening, if I'm going to be honest with you. We had a few chances in the first half, but they just weren't taken. And then right here, lovely play. John Joe O'Toole finding Widdison. He crosses it in and Ryan Brunt is there for the header. And that's his 10th goal of the season, if I'm right in saying. I'm pretty sure that's his 10th. And uh, that does put us 1-0 up. And... If it's anyone that's going to score, it's going to be Brunt because that is a fantastic cross, to be fair, and a great finish from Ryan Brunt. Lots of power on that header to make sure the goalkeeper can't get to it in time, and uh, it was always going to be dipping down into the back of the net, and it was a very, very good header, and Ryan Brunt, he has been our star man this year. Of course, we've got Max Clayton, but currently he's on a goal drought, and Emil Sinclair's performing better in the, uh, in the Cups, so we really do need someone 
who is a clinical finisher, and that comes in the frame of Ryan Brunt, and he's got his 10th goal in League uh, League 1. I almost said League 2 there, don't know why, but yeah, that does mean that thanks to Ryan Brunt, we do take down a 1-0 win against Brentford. Really, really disappointing game. I felt that we should have created more chances in this game. We did have a few chances, but I wouldn't say that they were scattered about the place, and uh, I would say that we definitely should have created more chances considering the amount of possession that we did have you can see there 56 percent possession we really should have dominated a lot more but we only had two shots on target in the end Brentford's defense was unbreakable undefeatable and the only way to do it was to cross the ball with Joe Widdison and find the head of Ryan Brunt and that's what we did and look at that I don't know if you saw that but Barnsley did get beaten which means that we are three points ahead and uh, Adam Reid here says he's disappointed not to start, but to be honest with you, Adam Reid, if you want to be part of this team, you got to be a team player. It's as simple as that. I am starting him in this game, but he's got really good physical stats for sure, and uh, he's a very versatile midfielder. He can play left back, left mid, centre mid, so he's going to be a very good player for us for sure, especially if we do get injuries in the full back position. But the only problem that I do find with him is his height. Five foot five. He is an absolute midget. And that is really a problem on this game because usually when you're that small, like that's almost the smallest player in the game, put it that way. Um, I'm pretty sure Elton, the uh, Brazilian uh, centre attacking mid in the Saudi Pro League, is the shortest player in the game. I'm pretty sure he's about five foot two or something. And uh, yeah, it really doesn't help, especially on this FIFA. But you can see here that we create a chance early on against Coventry City and uh, I'm pretty sure it's Coventry City, yeah it is and uh, we do manage to tuck it away with Ryan Brunt, Emile Sinclair lovely little pass through to Ryan Brunt, picking him out there, making a lovely run Ryan Brunt is and despite the fact that Ryan Brunt doesn't have the best attack positioning, he made a fantastic run there, I don't know if it's something to do with his morale or the fact that he's just desperate to score goals, I don't know, he just seems to be in the right position at the right time despite having poor work rates and positioning he's still a really good player and uh, it's the same with um, Sinclair he has pockets of good spells but nothing really too special if I'm gonna be honest with you he could do a lot better than he is doing and uh, right here this was really stupid don't know what Ryan Gould was doing back there in the first place and he is not a strong player you know that Ryan Gould is not the strongest of players and he gets pushed to the ground there but luckily Luckily, Robert Lainton makes a great save. Robert Lainton is an okay goalkeeper at times, but he can make some crucial errors, and they really should have scored that there. I was absolutely crapping my pants because I really did think that they would have scored that there. And right here as well. Don't know what the goalkeeper was doing, not coming out to that. He could have easily picked that one up, but he just mis mistimed the uh, through ball, and it was a bit of a kerfuffle in the end. But it does end out in being another corner for Coventry City, they cross this one in and it's cleared off the line, that might have been by Ryan Gould or Adam Reid, I'm not 100% sure, I think it was Reid, Reid doing good work but not here for sure, not here, double tap cross, crosses it in and it's a simple tap in for Coventry City to level up the scoring just before half time, really really disappointing uh, because we were playing so well in that first half, we definitely didn't deserve that to uh, happen to us but they were beginning to create quite a few chances in this game and uh, I really couldn't pass the ball around freely and just move like I normally do in games. I couldn't just have slow movements. They were just stealing the ball off of me at every attempt and they were making it very hard for me to break down Coventry City because they were having spells of possession, big spells at that and uh, they just weren't letting me passing it. It's as simple as that and uh, it's a really good finish though there from uh, Ryan Brunt. I was pretty impressed with him when he uh, scored that. But you can see right there that Preston North End are actually beating Barnsley at half time and that's what we did want to see. If we could get another goal and hold out for the win, that would put us in good stead and mean that we would progress further at the top of the table because we are currently first at the top of the table but only by three points. We want to be extending that lead if we can do. That would be really, really good if we can but, you know, it may not actually happen and you can see here, once again, I've got into a little habit of looking for the player who's been playing the worst and it was Ryan Gould who was on the lowest fitness as well so I'm pretty sure I do decide to take him off 
and uh, bring on Doyle or Harrison. I think I do bring on Harrison. Yes, I do. Because I needed a little bit more pace up front than uh, Doyle was going to bring to the team. Although Doyle is 60 overall now, so that is uh, very good to see. But yeah, it, w it was a very frustrating second half. And uh, they could have scored that one there. But luckily, Lainton manages to get to it. And it does end in a draw. So that's not too bad in a way. But in another way, it's not that great. But guys... If you have enjoyed this episode of Career Mode and want more Career Mode from me, please like and subscribe. If you missed the last episode, I'll leave a link in the description to that because uh, I know some people would have missed that maybe because I uploaded it fairly late. But I'll hopefully be uploading this one a little bit earlier than normal. And uh, guys, if you have enjoyed it, leave a like as always. Subscribe for more daily content and I'll see you next time for another episode. Thanks for watching.